Marley taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Celebrities post pics of the Amazon on fire. Great, one problem. Some are ancient and some aren't even the Amazon. Fake news and forest fires, very 2019. Pictures of the Thai King's consort break the Thai internet. We speak to a professor who can explain what all this pumice is doing floating around in the Pacific. And in an animal's doing stuff, we look at an event here in Turkey that is 800 years old. And to top of our news feed, fake news and forest fires. You kind of missed the reports about all the fires in the Amazon right now. We've covered them a bunch of times on this show, but some of the stuff you may have seen come across your timelines may not be entirely accurate. And that's a problem, not only because fake news is a plague in and of itself, but also because with such a serious situation, the way it's reported needs to steer clear of histrionics that lean toward falsehoods to make sure you, the viewer, get the info without being overwhelmed because overwhelmed by detail can lead to people being disinterested. Here's Ezra. The severity of the fires in the Amazon have caused a global outcry. World leaders and celebrities have shown their concern on social media. But some of the pictures shared may not be what they seem. Like this tweet from French President Emmanuel Macron, which shows a picture that's 16 years old. Actor Leonardo DiCaprio used the same picture. And this post by football star Cristiano Ronaldo isn't even in the Amazon. Celebrities Jaden Smith and Madonna took to their social media accounts with a photo that's three decades old. The Brazilian space agency INPE has registered 72,843 fires this year, the highest number since records began in 2013. There's been an 83% increase in the number of fires in the Amazon over last year, with 228 megatons of CO2 released into the air the highest amount since 2010. G7 countries have pledged $22 million to help fight the fires, but Brazil has rejected it. Macron offers aid from rich countries to the Amazon. Does anyone help anyone if it's not a poor person without something in return? Why do they have an eye on the Amazon? What have they wanted there for so long? A week after NASA posted the satellite images of the Amazon fires, people on social media are asking about fires in Africa. Over a period of just 48 hours, the weather source recorded 6,902 fires in Angola and 3,395 in the DRC. These satellite pictures aren't fake, but we might not have the whole picture, as this land being burned in Africa isn't all forests. Some belong to farmers. So perhaps what they call virtue signaling isn't enough. And we may just need to start checking the facts ourselves. OK, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now, this is a statue of Terai Trent. She's an academic from Zimbabwe and has been immortalized in a bronze in Manhattan as part of a project called Statues for Equality. Her likeness stands alongside ones from Oprah, Nicole Kidman, Jane Goodall, and Tracy Dyson. The project aims to increase the gender balance in public artworks. So women make up a tiny percentage of statues in New York City, just 3%. Now, it was 3% in London too, where there are more statues of men called John than there are of women. Well, these are photographs of the consort to the Thai king. Her name is Sinit Wong Vajira Pakdi, and as you can see, she's sewn in a flight suit, in a jet, uh, looking at a dog held by the king, and in various other shots. These pictures were released by the Thai royal family, and they caused the site they were released on to crash. So many people wanted to see them. Now, she's the first person to hold the position of consort in 100 years. King Vajira Longkorn married his third wife, Queen Sathida, in July. I'm not sure what kind of message the palace wants to give, but I think they want to show off her activities. I'm quite surprised that they released pictures like that. It creates a bad image for the monarchy because of those inappropriate pictures. 
The Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro, posted a disrespectful comment about the wife of the French president on Facebook because it's 2019 and that's what world leaders do now. President Macron has responded saying the comment was extraordinarily rude and sad and he said this. And it seems that yesterday he decided it would be a good idea for his minister, and this has never happened in France for a minister of the Republic to insult any leader whatsoever, to insult me, and for himself to make some comments that were extremely disrespectful about my wife. What do you want me to say? It's sad. It's sad. It's sad, first of all, for him and for Brazilians. I think that Brazilian women are without a doubt ashamed to read this from their president. I think that the Brazilians, who are a great people, are a bit embarrassed of his behaviour and expect for him as president to conduct himself properly with others. Since I have a lot of esteem and respect for the people of Brazil, I hope they will very soon have a president who is up to the job. And a photograph of Melania Trump nearly at kissing Justin Trudeau is being used by people on the internet to mock President Trump. There have been many, many memes of that image under the hashtag Melania loves Justin. And this is the latest teaser trailer for the new Star Wars movie, Rise of Skywalker. It will be the ninth and final one in the Star Wars saga and comes out in December. Now, since this thing dropped, it has drawn millions of views and countless comments as fans try and dissect what is going on and what the story will be. Now, I'm not going to do that. All I will say is that Ray looks wicked with that double lightsaber and that this thing better be good, J.J. Abrams. My childhood is counting on you. Well, now to the Pacific, where a volcano erupted under the ocean a week or so ago, and that created a huge floating reef of pumice bigger than the island of Manhattan. Now, it's a pretty cool example of something that happens every five years or so, and this one, it's hoped, could be of benefit to Australia's Great Barrier Reef. I spoke to Professor Scott Bryan from the Queensland University of Technology, who told me what happened and why. So I was uh, from an underwater volcano uh, that erupted on August 7th. So a good analogy is to think about a bottle of Coke or champagne. You shake it up, take the lid off, and what comes out is all this foam. And all that foam, if we could freeze that and break it up, that is basically pumice. And so magma is very similar. It's got very hot, obviously, but it's got a lot of water and gases dissolved in the magma under pressure. And when we have an eruption, we're releasing the pressure. It's like taking the top off a bottle. And then that allows all this magma and foam to be blasted out of the volcano into the air to then cool and then fall onto the ocean surface to make this pumice raft. So initially the raft itself would have been quite thick, particularly when all the pumice just fell out of the eruption column onto the ocean surface and may have been up to about half a metre or so thick of just tightly packed pumice all together. Now it's very uh, spread out to probably just a, a veneer of pumice sitting at the ocean surface. So it's probably uh, really only one or two sort of class thick, maybe 10 centimetres or so, so at the moment. But literally there's probably a trillion or more pieces of pumice all uh, piled together in this big raft and it's slowly moving westwards uh, with the winds and waves pushing it towards Fiji. Probably a little bit bigger than Manhattan, size of Manhattan. This raft, this eruption was sort of normal for, for a Tongan eruption that we've seen at, in historic times, but overall it's a fairly small one. But despite that, uh, certainly about a week ago, it was covering at least 150 square kilometres of the open ocean. Um, and over the coming weeks and months, that pumice is going to spread out more and more across, across the ocean. In the next couple of weeks, it's going to arrive in the southern islands of Fiji around the Lao group and that's where this pumice will first come into contact with coral reefs and islands. And in those environments, there'll be a lot of larvae in the water, which can attach uh, to the pumice and then start to grow. And so what's going to happen is this pumice is going to become a vehicle uh, for shallow marine organisms. And they're going to hitch a ride and travel up to 5,000 kilometres or so across the open ocean to eventually arrive in the Great Barrier Reef region and along eastern Australia. And so this is a, a mass transit mechanism for shallow marine life to be transported long distances fairly quickly at speeds of maybe 15 or so kilometres per day across the open ocean. 
but certainly across deep oceans and arrive to new locations like the Great Barrier Reef. And in fact, the Great Barrier Reef may in fact actually owe its origin to this mechanism of being corals and other marine species being brought in by this natural mechanism to then colonise the Great Barrier Reef in its current location. So it's certainly providing uh, communication and a continual supply every five years or so of, of new individuals um, and, and life uh, that live on coral reefs into the Great Barrier Reef region. So we're quite concerned with climate change, with cyclones, that their frequency might be increasing in the future and therefore the coral reefs uh, may have less time to naturally recover. But this is a potential mechanism that helps give it a bit of a boost bringing in uh, millions to billions of individuals of many different species that live on coral reefs to find a new home in the Great Barrier Reef region. Okay, let's keep spinning around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Tuesday. A new report says that more than half of all attempted logins to social media, 53%, come from scammers trying to access your account. They do so to try and then use your details to access your bank accounts or other sensitive and valuable areas of your digital life. According to the report's authors, $21 trillion in damages will be caused by the year 2021 as a result of cybercrime. The Cherokee natives of America were forced from their land by the US government in 1836. They were driven from what is now Georgia to Oklahoma in what became known as the Trail of Tears. As a way to appease them, they were promised a seat in the US Congress. They refused to participate in a government that had treated them so abominably. But now, 200 years later, they've taken steps to claim that seat. They have nominated this woman, Kimberly Teehee, as their delegate. Now, Viola Davis is one of the best actors out there right now, and she will play Michelle Obama in a new TV series called First Ladies. Eleanor Roosevelt and Betty Ford would also be depicted, but the production company behind the series has not yet announced the actors who will pay them. And meat-free burgers was one thing, but this is a step too far. KFC are testing chicken-free chicken wings and nuggets. They're made by Beyond Meat, the same company that's making a bunch of money selling those meat-free burgers. The Chicken Less Chicken will be on sale at a KFC in Atlanta where my dad lives, so I'll send him for a taste test and report back. And now for an animals doing stuff from here in Turkey. And this one is really old, more than 840 years old. Now, our resident Turkish folklore expert Betul says it's based on a myth about a shepherd and the woman he wanted to marry. She was the village chief's daughter, and the chief said his daughter could marry the shepherd if, she, if he could feed uh, his sheep with salt for three days and then make them swim across the river without drinking. And so the legend and this event was born. Have a look. And this is the guy who won. His name is Nejdet Ayadou, and he got $4,000 and some gold. Well done, Nejdet Abe. And that will do you from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel, and you can follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe, and add, and I will see you again tomorrow.